Put your hands together, please, for Andrew Mullet through Groves. Evening. How are you doing? Uh, yes. Uh, it is a kind of unread theme tonight here, is that representing Dawn of the Unread. Um, so, to paraphrase uh, Nick Fiend from 80s cult goth band Alien Sex Fiend, are you feeling zombified, Lester? Yes. So basically, for those of you who don't know, which I guess is probably a lot of you, um, the Dawn of the Unread project was started by um, James Walker, who is here tonight. Um, so James being James, he came up with the idea of putting together this project called Dawn of the Unread, which essentially was taking um, 10 Nottinghamshire-based writers and 10 national and international writers, putting them together so that they would uh, create 10 chapters for an online, interactive, zombie-based graphic novel that would appeal to younger people. Um, and it, it hoped to highlight sort of some of the lost literary figures. Uh, whether you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but um, in terms of literary figures in Nottingham, we've got Lord Byron, uh, D.H. Lawrence, Alan Silito, and the list goes on. So it was about kind of taking these people and characters that related to them and reanimating them and putting them into modern day stories, which again would appeal to younger people. And the character that I was given is somebody I came across a few years ago, which is kind of a little known uh, Nottinghamshire character um, called the Fifth Duke of Portland. Uh, the Fifth Duke of Portland uh, lived most of his years and his last remaining years at Welbeck Abbey, which is in Nottinghamshire. And it's a beautiful house and it's got large tracts of land. It's a fantastic estate. But the Fifth Duke of Portland, being a member of the aristocracy and a very eccentric member of the aristocracy, uh, decided this wasn't good enough. And he decided to do, in the words of Paul Weller from the Jam, he was going underground. And the Duke of Portland created a large network of underground tunnels beneath Welbeck Abbey, which included uh, his own private railway system, um, a, a, a fantastic uh, stables that was full of fat horses because they were never ridden. Uh, he had a ballroom that was never used, uh, a huge library that was very seldom visited, and he had some of the greatest pieces of art in the world that were never seen. All of these rooms were also painted bright pink uh, on his sort of command. Uh, he had a massive workforce as well. He was one of the biggest employers in the county, if not the country, and he was a very generous employer in some ways, uh, as well as paying his staff um, a fairly decent wage. He would also issue them, each and every one of them, with a free umbrella, whether they wanted one or not. And if he ever came across a female member of his staff in the house, he would order them to go ice skating on the ice rink he had built, especially for those purposes, whether they wanted to or not. So he was a quite a strange fellow. And as well as being fairly eccentric in mind, he also had a fairly eccentric appearance. He would very often be seen wearing a three foot tall stovepipe hat, he um, would invariably wear up to three frock coats at the same time, uh, whether it was winter or summer. In the top pocket of his frock coat, he often carried a live mole. And for whatever reason, he used to tie bits of string to the bottoms of his trousers. He was a fairly eccentric character. So we thought he was an ideal character to feature in Dawn of the Unread. And, and this is a piece really um, which is based on, all, on the sort of story I wrote for Dawn of the Unread and the Duke of Portland. So I wanted to take you on a journey, a journey beneath, beneath, beneath the weight of a century and its spare change seasons, under jet fighter trails, a future and reason. Wrapped in ambiguity and garments of wire, the house that never rests, welcomes or smiles. 
Where tunnel spread as arteries, pulsing under woodland skin, where bleeding gaslight scabs old wounds from long forgotten things. Where ghosts of obese horses stare forever at themselves, where no dancers waltz to memories and distant church bells. Where time takes a holiday and masterpieces hide to consider tin box options and oil based suicides. The shadow of a workforce digs deep and shields its eyes, and chambermaids skate eternally, carving stories in the ice. Where authorities of silence push that buried golden age, cursing lonely circumstance and a name scrawled on a page. Where a duke found no home. No peace, no home, but a necessary labyrinth and forever in which to roam beneath.